Welcome back to Biology in Your Backyard. I'm Dr. Mark Johnson. I'm May. I'm Oscar. And today we're going to be talking about combating the invaders. Die invaders, scum! Not those types of invaders, Oscar. Oh. Alien invaders. Not those types of aliens. Alien species, non-native species. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, come with us and we'll tell you all about them. So, Dad, what is an alien species? Well, an alien species, also known as a non-native species, is any species that isn't originally from here. So we live in Ontario, Canada. So any species that isn't originally from Ontario and the eastern part of North America. So this could be a species that's from Asia, or it could be a species from Europe or any other place other than right here. That's what an alien species is. What's an invasive species then? Right, so all invasive species are alien or non-native, but not necessarily all non-native species or alien species are invasive. I know, that sounds confusing. Invasive species are those species that displace native species. So they can have a harmful effect on the ecosystem and other species that are native. So dad, what makes native species so important? Great question. So as I mentioned, native species have often lived here for thousands, even millions of years. And as a result, they've often adapted with the other species that they're interacting with, other plant species, other animal species that may use them for food or, or maybe even use them for pollen or nectar. And so they could have a really beneficial effect on other species in the community, other native species, and on the ecosystem. Invasive species though, they haven't had this long history of, of interaction with these other species. And as a result, they don't have as, as large of a benefit for the ecosystem of other native species, and they can have a very detrimental effect. So let's first talk about garlic mustard. This is a plant that you can find frequently on the edge of a forest, in a forest, and you can recognize it because it has a cluster of leaves, at the base of the ground, like you can see right here. And then later in the year, it's going to have a stalk that grows up and produces a number of, of small white flowers and eventually very, very thin fruits. But this is early spring, so we're not, we don't have those fruits yet. So if we take a look at the leaves, it's important you be able to recognize it just from the leaves. You can see that the leaves are roughly heart-shaped and they have these rounded teeth going all the way around their margin. And one of the distinctive identifying features of garlic mustard is its smell. So May, I want you to take a leaf and crush it up and tell me what it smells like to you. It smells like garlic. <laughs> yeah, and that's why it gets its name, garlic mustard. Now we're gonna show you how to remove invasive species like this garlic mustard to get rid of them from your own property. Like this, hi, hi, hi. No. Not like that. That's not going to do anything. If you just whack off the top, they'll regrow. What you need to do is you need to go to the base of the, the plant, below the leaves, right where the stem meets the soil, and then slowly pull it up so you get all of the roots. You see that? I pulled up, if we, I pulled up all of the roots on this garlic mustard, so now it can't come back. And I'll go and I'll make sure that I throw this in a place where, where it'll die and can't regenerate. Let's talk about how to recognize dandelions. Now dandelions are really easy to recognize when they're flowering. They have those bright yellow flowers, but when they don't have the flowers, you can also recognize them because they have a base of leaves that come from the base of the ground, and they have these leaves that have these large, almost like jagged teeth, like a crocodile teeth, and then these undulations that go right into the stem here. And you can see that all of them have these types of teeth. Now let's talk about how you can remove these dandelions. There's a wrong way and a right way to remove dandelions. May's first going to demonstrate the wrong way. When you just, you take up all the leaves, but you leave the root and the base. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Now the right way to remove dandelions is to use a tool, much like this one that has a long end to it if you can, or even a trowel will work, and then you've got to dig in deep to get the roots. 
while also holding on to the base of the leaves to try and pull up while you're digging out the roots there because they have a long tap root that you have to remove. If you don't get rid of the tap root, the plant will be able to come back. So here you can see May was able to get the tap root and she's effectively gotten this dandelion out so it can't regrow. A common invader in our area is thistle and this is called bull thistle. You can recognize them because they have these very thistly leaves with these spines at the ends of their leaves at each of the tips. And if you step on it, you sure do know it. So if it's on your lawn, you'll probably want to dig it out and you're going to need a tool because its root can go down real deep. So this is called burdock and burdock has these big leaves and later in the year the leaves are going to get huge. A lot of people mistake it for rhubarb, but you can distinguish it because not only does it have these big leaves, but they can be quite white along the stem and a little hairy on the back. This is the one that causes those burrs that get stuck all over your all over your clothes. And so this is something that can often displace native species. So you may want to take it out of your yard if you have it there. And here's one of those burrs that I was referring to. Want to see how well they stick? Great job, Oscar. Some of you may have this non-native species on the edge of your yard. And this is called teasel, which you can recognize because it has this comb-like cluster that is where the f flowers come out late in fall at this time in spring all that's left is last year's flowers and then it's really spiky on the stem below the flower cluster common mullein is a common plant that you can find in many yards originally from europe and asia you can find it in many places in north america easily recognized because of these big hairy leaves that are just so soft Oh, they're so soft. To get rid of this plant, if you want to dig it up, you'll have to use a trowel or the tool we showed earlier because it has a very deep tap root. Later in the year, the stalk will grow up into a stalk of, of yellow flowers. Now, if you have this grass, Phragmites, this can be a real problem for you on your property. This is an invasive species. And look how tall it is. It's like twice my height. This is something you have to get in and dig down deep. And it can take over ditches and the edges of wetlands and displace many native species. So this is something you'll definitely want to try and remove if this is around your property. Not all invasive species are plants, of course. There can be lots of animals that are invasive species, even fungi. Consider, for example, the brown-lipped snail shown here. They've been introduced from Europe, and now they're very abundant in North America. Not all alien species are necessarily bad or have negative effects on native species and local ecosystems. Consider, for example, these white clover, which you can recognize because they have these three leaves, and they're often very abundant in your yard. They can have positive effects for native species in two ways. One way in which white clover can benefit other native species and ecosystems is by providing them with nutrients that will increase and benefit their growth. Do you see the white little circles in the middle of this screen? Well, those are called nodules and they're attached to the roots of white clover. They contain many bacteria and these bacteria take nitrogen from the air and provide that nitrogen as a nutrient to the plant that it then needs in order to grow. Well, these bacteria and the plants also release this nitrogen into the soil, and this can benefit many other plant species that are growing around them. Therefore, it can have a benefit on those species and ecosystems. Another way that white clover can benefit native species is by providing nectar and pollen for pollinators like this bumblebee. In fact, in your yard and similar yards, scientists have shown that white clover can provide most of the nectar that bees need to survive. Absolutely amazing. So now you know what alien and invasive species are and why invasive species can be so bad for native species and ecosystems. And you know how to combat some of those plant invaders as well by digging them up. Now at this point, I want you to go out and find three species that are either alien 
or invasive, and they don't necessarily have to be plants. If you're in Ontario, we've shown you some of those invasive species. If you're in another area, they may be other plants, animals, or even fungi. And then after you've identified those three species, I want you to have a discussion of, as a family on what you can do to combat the invaders. We'll see you next time at Biology in Your Backyard.